In a previous video I made, I showed you how to optimize your VR experience in Falcon BMS 4.38. Since then, the Falcon BMS development team dropped update one on us and VR performance is better than ever. I'm Hades11 and in this video I'm going to show you my VR settings and just how good VR can be in Falcon BMS 4.38.1. All right, the way I'm going to do this is simple. These are the in-game settings that I am going to run this test on. Now, if you refer back to the old video that I showed you, you'll realize that I actually had to turn down a lot of these in-game settings. I had to turn my object detail down. I had to turn the trees down. I had to turn HDR down, all those things. And in the current implementation for VR, these are the settings that I'm actually running with all the time, which is absolutely awesome and well done by the BMS team. Now, I do find it kind of unfortunate that they didn't mention any VR optimizations in the change log. So I jumped in and I said, let's try to conduct some quick tests to see if VR performance actually did get better. Let's talk about these VR changes. So the first test we're going to run is I'm going to run the same exact scenario that I ran in the previous video. Only this time, these are the settings that I currently have in my VR user config. And you'll see everything is just turned on pretty much to its maximum, coupled with those in-game settings. These are the numbers that I am getting while playing that very same scenario. There is a small caveat that yes, I am recording and that does have a small impact on performance, but you can see the graph is absolutely amazing. Things are incredibly stable. The reprojection ratio is very minimal. The CPU frame time is completely low. Everything is honestly quite perfect. Now, one of the big reasons for this performance boost comes from the fact that we no longer need to specify the external rendering type. They fixed the distance at which things render like the HUD and the HIMIX so that we're not getting that weird overlap. And now it seems like it's calibrated more towards infinity. There is still on occasion when you look on certain spots, a little bit of overlap, but it is more than manageable and actually works. And this was a huge performance killer in VR previously. Since that has been taken care of, the VR performance is honestly some of the best VR performance that I've seen in any flight sim at this point. The other setting that absolutely makes a huge difference is foveated rendering. Now you can see that I have it turned on right now. You can actually see it on the screen. If you look towards the very edges, specifically like the seven o'clock area, you'll see the pixels becoming more pixelated. And I left that in the recording on purpose so that you can see what the foveated rendering looks like. In my headset though, that is honestly just outside of my view and I can't see it when I'm playing. So it really is a drastic increase in performance with very minimal impact on my experience. I'm gonna take you over to the target area because this is one of the sections of the previous video where we would drop the bombs and the particle effects from the explosions and the smoke would absolutely tank our performance. We would see the biggest possible drop, sometimes to unplayable levels, if we were down low when these explosions happened. And I think it's really important that we take a look at the difference that we see today. Again, remember, we are on the default settings for graphics, as well as rendering, you know, 16K tiles and all that extra good eye candy. The, I think the big thing that I'm not running right now that does actually have an impact is the HDR. And the reason I have HDR turned off is not for performance. I did plenty of testing with HDR turned on and there wasn't any negative impact from having the HDR turned on. I have it turned off simply because I just don't like the way it looks. It's very distracting at times to me in VR and uncomfortable to look at. So I have it turned off. So our bombs are dropped and I'm gonna try to take this same route in every test where we dip down into the shrubs, which again are turned up, right? The trees are turned up and you'll see right here, we're getting a spike. It looks like nine milliseconds, nine point something milliseconds at the peak for CPU frame time. That is absolutely crazy. Now it's important to note as we start to roll into the next test that this is without some video stabilization. So this is my raw VR gameplay without stabilization applied through OBS. When I apply stabilization, 
things get a little bit more aggressive on the CPU frame times because of OBS using my processor and it has nothing to do with BMS. So I'll do my best to point that out to you and show you the difference there. But before we bring stabilization and external tooling into it, this is a drastic improvement in what's going on. Our reprojection ratio is less than 1%. We're averaging 74.4 of our 75 frames. Our, G our GPU frame time is tiny. Our CPU frame time is tiny. And everything about this is the expected VR experience. We are flying low and we have amazing texture details turned on and turned up and there's nothing more we could ask for so again the config is in the description this is my config how i play typically when i'm not recording okay this next test i actually have the video stabilization turned on so again this is me using external programs while recording you'll probably notice it's just a little less jittery it's a little more zoomed in and cropped you can't see the foveated rendering because it's cropped out it's still there none of the other settings have changed just simply the fact that i am processing this image as i'm recording it and instantly you can see the difference in the cpu frame times coming through when stuff specifically particles and smoke end up on the screen that's really the big killer when running stabilization so this isn't to say that bms has a problem this is to say that even on a 14700k processor if you're doing extra stuff to smooth out your vr world or to record vr stuff and do your best to make it look great you can expect an impact on your system to be taking place, right? That is going to impact your VR experience overall. This is something to keep an eye out for, just in case you are trying to fly in VR and you do realize, man, even after update one, things are pretty stuttery and I don't really understand what's happening. Make sure that nothing is hogging your resources. I know that's kind of a basic thing to say, but this is just how much of a difference it can make. But here's where BMS, we tip their hat to them, is I'm still not dealing with a huge reprojection ratio. Now, that being said, that's going to change here. As soon as I solve my problems, I accidentally hit the wrong button on the ICP, and now the terrain following radar is freaking out. So I got to go through troubleshooting that and fixing that. As soon as I do, we're going to get down into the weeds, and we'll see what happens when we fly down low. Okay, we fast forwarded. Yes, TFR problems are fixed. We're actually fully back in business as we go through this low level section, really to just try to get the shrubs to pick up and mess with us and do their stuff, right? We really want the terrain to step in and cause problems for us. And overall, it does a significantly good job. You can see here our CPU frame time spikes, right? We're getting a little low. There's a couple more ground units and objects in this area. Our frames are dipping. This is not, again, a BMS problem. This is a, my system is being asked to stabilize and process the feed as it's recording. And the result in that is that it's going to impact my system. I'm recording at 4K. I'm stabilizing the images we go through, right? So if I wasn't recording, these settings are exactly what you would expect them to be. If I wasn't stabilizing the image, the numbers would be exactly the same as they were in the previous example. I'm gonna fly over to that target area. We're gonna go drop some bombs and I'll show you the smoke and then we'll move on to the third and final example. All right, as always, ignore the bad flying, right? We're just here doing some testing, so we're not really jumping too much into it. You can see that after dealing with the terrain back previously on the way, our reprojection ratio is a little bit higher um, but again, you just got to keep that in mind that this isn't a BMS problem. This is a, a me problem. So specifically, if you're using any type of stabilization for VR and OBS, and if you're having a hard time in VR, it's probably because of that stabilization, right? It really crushes your performance. This is the exact same settings that we just had without the stabilization. And I know the stabilization makes the video 
nicer to watch. So it's going to be a trade-off that you have to decide whether or not it's one you're willing to make. So here we go. Reprojection ratio is, is kind of ticking up a little bit. The explosions are happening, or at least it was. We're still at about 6.6%. We're peaking at about 9.4. So getting a lot closer to 10 on the CPU frame times because the stabilization is heavy on the CPU side. So overall though, this whole flight, even with stabilization, we did average above 70 frames and we had less than 10% reprojection ratio, which I think is much more than acceptable when recording and stabilizing the footage and doing all the extra stuff that isn't simply playing the game. Now, this one example I found, this extra smoke over here. So I said, let's go fly over to it. And you can see like when you're going to stabilize stuff, the game or the computer, the CPU, whatever, just hates all the extra particles from the particle system. So we're gonna go ahead and, and see what the difference is if we turn some of that down. Can we stabilize the video? Can we add in these extra things that we might wanna be running like overlays or whatever else while we're flying Falcon BMS? And what is the impact on that? Okay, this is the first area where we're actually gonna change our settings a little bit. In my BMS VR config, I have now taken the shadow mapping, the shadow smoke, and the, the particles on fire effects, and I turn them down to zero. The other thing I've done is I've taken the terrain photo reel max tile res, and I turned it down to 8K because I can't really see the difference in VR anyway. So I turned that down, and I turned off the shadows that could potentially cause FPS drops when we're dealing with a lot of particles on the screen. And right now the video is stabilized and you can see in this beginning section, previously we had a lot of frame drops happening right here because of the CPU frame time, you see it spiking just a teeny tiny bit right here. This is the stabilized version. Now you might be thinking right now, hey, we're off to a great start. I think I can run with this. You'll notice that there's not much difference at all when it comes to what it looks like on screen. Maybe a little bit, but in the headset, not so much. It looks pretty much the same. So we're gonna go ahead and fly over to this terrain area that in our previous example, with full settings and stabilization turned on, kind of crushed our CPU frame times. And we're gonna see what the difference is when we lower that tile resolution as well as turn the shadows off of those particles. Now, in this case, it's not a huge effect on us because there's not a lot of smoke in this area, but you'll see we're, we're still getting that jump. It's almost a non-factor because this is about the same as we were getting beforehand. In just a second, I'm gonna pause flying through here and I'm gonna leave the same settings. I'm not even gonna leave this scenario. I'm just gonna go use the same settings we've loaded this with and I'm just gonna turn stabilization off in OBS. The reason I wanted to do this is to show you that this is not a Falcon BMS problem, the CPU frame times right now. It is a me and OBS stabilizing my video problem. So right here, I pause and I'm, I'm heading over to OBS and we're turning off the stabilization. And now we're coming right back and you can see everything resource wise has smoothed out, right? We're getting about a four millisecond frame time flying through this terrain and our reprojection ratio is obviously gonna drop and everything is just so much better, so much more stable the moment I turn off all of that post-processing for the stabilization. So if you are still struggling in VR, go ahead and turn off these shadows or even consider dialing those tiles down to 8K. If we look, like my, I think my actual resolution in the headset is something like 2760 by 2760 or something like that. It isn't able to see 8K anyway, right? For the most part. So it's totally okay for us to dial that in. And with the stabilization off, you can see a little bit more of the foveated rendering because the cropping is different on my scene with uh, stabilization turned off. But you can see everything really straightened itself out. So I'm gonna head over to the target area really quick and we'll show you what the difference is over there with all the smoke effects and the particles. And you'll see how they affect the game with these lowered settings. 
Okay, now we're heading over to the target area. We're going to drop these bombs in. I do want to remind you that in the first example, we ran on high settings with no stabilization. Now we're on, I'd say, medium high settings with no stabilization. And in the first example, our CPU frame times peaked at like 9.6, 9.7 milliseconds, somewhere around there. And this is really where dialing those settings down just an itty bitty tiny bit has actually a huge impact on overall stability and longevity of just having a smooth VR experience. So those explosions are about to go off and you'll see that we're actually gonna be in a really great position. So this is not so much the 8K tiles that are giving us this boost in CPU frame time as it is the shadows on particles, but you'll see we're at six milliseconds 6.9 is what we got up to. So we gained about two to three milliseconds of performance back on our CPU frame times when it comes to these particle effects that kick up and take place, right? And overall, our graph is looking great. It's it's righted itself, and that's because we turned that stabilization off. So this is really what you can expect out of Falcon BMS right now with these settings. So these are my quote unquote recording settings. This is what I would use to record with. Uh, that way I can get a good balance between quality and performance as well as a good recording out of it. But if I'm just gonna sit down to play, I'm gonna fly with the best possible settings that I have, which I showed you earlier. Now, both settings are listed in the description below. I have my recording settings and I have my just i'm gonna play the game as is settings you can copy either of those into your falcon bms user config and you'll be all set and ready to take advantage of all the changes that have happened to performance in vr for falcon bms they did a great job the bms team deserves their flowers on this one they did a really fantastic job making vr a much better experience for those of us that like to fly with it well, there you have it. If you liked the video, you know what to do. Like the video. If you want to see more like it, make sure you subscribe to the channel. And as always, we'll see you in the next one.